If you are looking for the best value CPU at the moment, then the Ryzen 5 7500F can be had for $125 currently, and also the i5 12400F, that can be had for under $100. Now these two CPUs are 6 cores, 12 threads, and they utilize the latest technology from both AMD and Intel. Well, in the case of Intel, virtually the latest technology. 12th gen is very similar to 13th and 14th gen. And in today's video, we are going to be comparing these two CPUs side by side in a gaming showdown at both 1080p lower settings and 1440p ultra settings. We're gonna be showing you guys the benchmark results both in table form and also in side by side comparison. So you can see which one outshines the other. And spoiler alert, one of these CPUs is actually extremely good to the point where I'm definitely gonna be recommending it as a new staple if you wanna get some of the best performance in competitive multiplayer titles. Though, let's get into this showdown right after today's video sponsor. Perhaps your computer has become faulty recently and you wanna to upgrade to a new system and you wanna keep all your data intact. Well, if that someone is you, then the easiest way to do this is to simply clone your drive. Now, the easiest way to clone that drive is to use today's video sponsor, EaseUs. With this simple application, you can copy your source drive, original operating system drive, and then select your target drive and let the cloning begin. For a small fee, you can activate your copy and use the software even from your desktop whilst within Windows and Windows 7, Windows 10 or Windows 11, it doesn't matter. It's got a lot of compatibility here. This takes all the hassle away and you no longer need to go out and pay a professional or have a particular special skill set in order to do this. And once you've cloned your drive, which in this case, when we tested it here, it only took a few minutes, you can then use this as your new drive. Now, of course, for Tech Yes City viewers, I've managed to get a cheaper price. Just use the link in the description below and cop that discount. Let's get back to the video. Welcome back guys to Tech Yes City. And here we've got the two CPUs on different motherboards where I'm gonna show you guys what configuration we've used here. I decided to go with an RTX 4070 Super on both configurations, as well as use the same cooler, which is a Deepcool AK400 Digital, which can be considered a mid-range air cooler. And for the motherboard on the AMD side, we're going with a budget A620 HDV+. No frills here, very good value for money, especially coupled with the Ryzen 5 7500F. Then on the Intel side, we decided to use a B760 ITX board, Phantom Gaming, now let's start this comparison off with competitive multiplayer titles, the first being Counter-Strike 2. And here at 1080p low settings, we can see here the Ryzen 5 7500F actually outshines the 12400F by quite a considerable margin. And of course, this is at 1080p low settings, which is what a lot of competitive pros like to use. Though if we decide to raise the quality settings to 1440p very high on this particular title, you can see here now the differences are very much mitigated to the point where there's not much of a difference between the two. Though moving over to Fortnite, it's quite a similar story as CS2. However, the differences aren't as pronounced at 1080p low as they were in CS2, but there's still a sizable difference here to be had between these two CPUs. Now, looking at the clock speeds, we can see that the i5-12400F likes to run all cores at around 4 gigahertz. Then the Ryzen 5 7500F boosts all the way up to 5 gigahertz. So there actually is quite a big difference here in the clock speeds and this is just not due to those clock speeds however the ipc i believe is better on the ryzen 5 7500f than it is on the i5 12400f and we'll interlude here with a graph showing the cinebench results which show that the Ryzen 5 7500F can score over 14,000 points on the multi-core score. And then on the single core speed, it also beats out the 12400F quite a bit there too. Though you might stop me here and say, Brian, the i5 12400F, now it's running at a lower clock speed. It's going to use up less power. And in Cinebench R23, when we did these tests, that was the case, but it was roughly only around 20 watts difference with 154 watts from the wall being drawn versus around 132 on the i5 12400F. But of course, the sheer difference in performance means that the Ryzen 5 7500F is actually a more efficient CPU as well as a better performing CPU in total. The move over to Helldivers 2, a game that's kind of getting surrounded by a bit of controversy right now. We see here at 1080p lower settings with a native resolution without any upscaling technologies on, the Ryzen 5 outperforms the i5 by quite a substantial amount of FPS here from 203 up to 242. 
Now stepping things up to 1440p maximum quality settings here, the difference is then mitigated to only a difference of 1 FPS, and the 0.1% lows are also very similar. They're looking at a title that's just been released, Manalord. This is a new RTS from an indie developer, and this game actually runs extremely well on both these CPUs. If we go down to 1080p low settings, we can see the Ryzen 5 does outperform the i5, but it's not a huge gap like the other games we showed here, but the 0.1% lows were substantially better on the Ryzen 5, especially at 1080p low settings. But when we step it up to 1440p ultra settings, this is where the differences are mitigated like most of the other titles here. And the 0.1% lows are actually better on the Intel than they were on the Intel at 1080p low. Though the final title we're showing you is Baldur's Gate 3. 1080p low settings shows that there's probably the least difference I've shown you here in terms of 1080p titles. And I believe this is due to the engine is being run on Vulkan, which does utilize the CPU extremely efficiently. And here we've got around 188 average FPS versus 172. And then if we look at 1440p Ultra, the differences are non-existent. Though while we're on this title, I did test out the power consumption numbers whilst we're gaming with that RTX 4070 Super. And the power being used from the wall here was basically the same, but the edge does go to the Ryzen 5 7500F, scoring more FPS at this particular wattage settings. So with all those gaming numbers out of the way, it's time to talk value here with both these CPUs. Which should you go for and which is going to be the better choice, at least in my opinion. And looking at these graphs, I would say for sure the Ryzen 5 7500F is going to be a clear winner, especially if you want to play competitive multiplayer titles on a bit of a budget. Where if we look at say the Ryzen 7 7800X3D for example, and we've got a video coming out on that very soon, but if we look at that CPU in particular, you're gonna be spending a whole lot more money, not just on the CPU, but also the motherboard, the cooling solution, and maybe even a better power supply. And I just don't think you're going to extract a whole lot extra out of going with a setup like that versus something we've got right here, especially coupled in with an RTX 4070 Super, which is pretty much one of the best value GPUs, at least from Nvidia's camp out there at the moment. So going forward, after seeing these numbers here today, I'm actually really impressed with the 7500F to the point where I'm gonna be recommending it as a new staple for people starting out in PC gaming and they just wanna go to CPU that they don't have to fork out a whole lot extra for. Now for the memory, you may notice in the graphs, we did use just 5200 megahertz budget DDR5 memory. This stuff can be had for some of the cheapest prices on DDR5 at the moment. And of course, an A620 motherboard is not going to set you back a whole lot. Now, in terms of total cost versus the i5-12400F, you're gonna be spending roughly an extra $20 on the motherboard. And I believe that's just due to demand. The Ryzen 5 is simply outselling the i5 at this point in time. I know for a fact that the licensing costs are actually very similar. That's the cost that uh, the board manufacturers pay both Intel and AMD on something like an H610 or a A620 motherboard. They're very similar to the point where that's not gonna make for those street price differences that you're seeing. But also the CPU itself does carry roughly a $30 premium. But for that extra $50 that you're gonna spend, you're getting a more efficient CPU that's just going to have more headroom in future games, as well as if you wanna get the most FPS right now. So what about those pesky temperatures where I'm gonna show you guys a graph of both the Ryzen 5 7500F and also the i5 12400F whilst I was testing them in Cinebench after 20 minutes of straight usage. And here's where the Ryzen 5 went up to a maximum of 75 degrees, and then the i5-12400F went up to a maximum of 53 degrees. So both these CPUs were running absolutely fine with a mid-range CPU cooler. I always like to have my temperatures staying under 80 degrees, but of course in games, the temperatures are even lower because the CPUs aren't being stressed as hard as they are in Cinebench R23. So what about if you leave your computer idle and you say go eat a pizza with baked beans on it and then go drink a green tea with that, are you going to see a difference here? And here's where they both perform very similar when they're idling and doing nothing. And if you're AFK, you're going to see a very small difference in power consumption between these two CPUs and their respective motherboards. Then let's wrap this up and go to a conclusion with the Ryzen 5 7500F and the i5-12400F. Now, I have given preference in today's video for the 7500F, and that's because the performance gap in some of these tests is actually quite substantial, and the price differences aren't that big between going with the Ryzen 5 versus the i5. That being said, however, both these CPUs are great choices 
if you want to get into the world of PC gaming. I don't think you can go wrong with either one, but if I was building a new computer for myself, look at these numbers here today, everything I've seen, I would pick the Ryzen 5 as a clear winner. The two final points with these CPUs is that the prices that I've shown here today are from AliExpress. I noticed where I am locally, there is actually quite a bit of a premium on the i5 12400F, for example, but also I can't even find the Ryzen 5 in stock here. So if you're in the US, for example, I checked the prices there and the i5 is going for about $35 more, but it does include a box cooler and the Ryzen 5 is unfortunately going for a substantial amount more. But that being said, a lot of people do shy away from buying from AliExpress. But my personal experience with using AliExpress for buying especially CPUs is that I've never had a problem and that's over the course of seven years and buying quite a few CPUs off this website. It's been very good. In fact, over the years, the shipping times have actually reduced to the point where I can get my CPUs that I order within even a week from ordering them. Anyhow, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And also let us know in the comment section below, do you have either of these CPUs? Are you rocking them? Do you want to get them? What's your thoughts and opinions on them? Love reading your comments as always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from David Taylor. And he asks, follow the channel quite a bit, though some of it is above my head. I have a question. I use CAD, the program, mainly to model 3D prints and also dabble in some video editing, not too high end. I will have to replace my 2012 PC. Some of the USB and sound parts are failing. My current system is an i5 12500K, 3.3 gigahertz, eight gigabytes of RAM, and the graphics card is a GTX 1050 Ti. The graphics card seems to be okay, but struggles somewhat with the video. Are there any recommendations out there that would suit my needs? Regards, David. So David, I think you've come to ask this question right on the perfect video, where I would personally pick the Ryzen 5 7500F for an upgrade. It's going to give you a huge performance boost over the 2500K. And then for a GPU, you can even, if you don't mind going AMD, you can go with an RX 6600, or you can look at something, especially if you're just video editing, you can look at say an RTX 2060 Super, which is also a really good price online and locally for used deals. Hope that answers that question. And with that aside, if you guys have stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, then you know what to do hit that sub button, ring that bell. And also don't forget to check out today's video sponsor if you want an easy way to clone that old systems drive and upgrade it with very minimal fuss from East Us. I'll put the links in the description and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now, bye.